Hi, I am Madan Sundram. I am the Director of Cardiac Cath Lab and Endovascular Services at the University of Arizona, Banner University Medical Center in Tucson, and I will be speaking on renal denervation therapy. I don't have anything to disclose. In the next eight minutes or so, I will review briefly the epidemiology of uh, hypertension, renal nerves and its control of uh, blood pressure, systems that are available for renal denervation therapy, the randomized studies that evaluated renal denervation therapy, and conclude by summarizing the evidence that favors renal denervation therapy and some future direction. We're all well aware that uh, hypertension is extremely common. It is estimated that about 1 billion people um, worldwide have uh, hypertension. It is associated with significant morbidity and mortality and estimated 9 million deaths a year. Based on the new ACCAHA definition, uh, which is uh, uh, systolic blood pressure greater than 130, diastolic blood pressure greater than 80 millimeters mercury, about 50% of U.S. adults will have hypertension if this definition is used. Even though medications are the mainstay of uh, treatment, it is also known that about 50% of patients admit to be admit to either being fully or partially non-adherent to medications at some point. And this really is the place where renal denervation therapy could be a valuable addition to hypertension therapy. This slide really shows the renal nerves and how it controls the blood pressure. There are both uh, efferent and afferent sympathetic nerves in the kidneys that uh, play a role in the, blood, in, the man, in the control of blood pressure. When the efferent nerves are stimulated, this results in uh, vasoconstriction and decreased renal blood flow, which in turn activates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which in turn causes sodium and water retention that results in uh, high blood pressure. The afferent nervous control of uh, blood pressure is poorly understood. It is, a, it is postulated that it, it works by a central mechanism. There are two uh, systems or two, uh, two different systems that are available for renal innovation therapy. One is a radio frequency based system that has a first generation simplicity flex uh, catheter system, which has uh, one electrode. And the second generation or a more contemporary generation simplicity spiral catheter system that has four electrodes in a helical fashion. And the ultrasound based uh, system um, that is uh, a paradise ultrasound catheter-based system. This uh, slide really shows uh, the first-generation Simplicity Flex system on the left, the helical Simplicity Spiral system on the right top corner of the slide, and at the bottom of the slide, the ultrasound-based system. Simplicity Hypertension 2 was the first randomized study that evaluated renal denervation therapy and compared it to medical therapy. Uh, which randomized about 100 patients. And the inclusion criteria was uh, uh, systolic blood pressure greater than 160 millimeters at baseline. And at six month follow up, this study really demonstrated a significant reduction in blood pressure with renal denervation therapy to the order of about 30 millimeters mercury difference in the systolic and about 12 millimeter difference in the diastolic blood pressure as shown in the figure to the right of the slide. So this really got us all excited about uh, renal denervation therapy. However, that was followed by a much larger Simplicity Hypertension 3 study. The unique feature about this study is that this was a large prospective single blind sham control study that randomized about 500 patients with a, a systolic office blood pressure greater than 160 and an ambulatory 24 hour blood pressure uh, greater than 135 millimeters mercury. And at six month follow up, compared to the baseline with the renal denervation therapy, there was a, a, a decrease in both the office blood pressure and the ambulatory blood pressure. However, a same degree of difference was also noted in the control arm. And when both the groups, the sham control group and the renal denervation therapy group was, was compared at the end of six months, the difference was pretty negligible and was not as, not statistically significant. There are some possible explanations for this negative study. There were a lot of medication changes that were made uh, 
in this uh, in 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 about forty percent of patients during the uh, the conduct of the study, there was uh, inadequate operator experience, and uh, and also inadequate degree of renal denervation uh, in the study, and also the tr study included patients with isolated systolic hypertension, which uh, it, which we know uh, does not respond well to renal denervation therapy. So this slide here summarizes all the studies up until this point uh, that examined the role of renal innovation therapy and compared it to the placebo or the control group. And I'd, I'd like to point out that there were this, these three studies, the Simplicity Hypertension 2, Diener Hypertension, and Renal Innovation in OSA. These are the three studies that showed a significant reduction in blood pressure, but majority of the studies uh, were negative uh, studies. So there, there was some modifications that were made to the renal innovation uh, procedure itself. Um, it was shown uh, that even though the density of the nerves uh, were, uh, were greater in the proximal renal arteries compared to the distal renal arteries, however, in the distal renal arteries and the branches, the nerves seem to be clustered much closer to the artery itself, thereby making it more accessible for the renal denervation procedure. This was, all, this was also shown in animal studies that uh, when, when they selectively uh, ablated the distal and the branch renal vessels, there were lower renal norepinephrine levels and better hypertension control. So this was really, uh, uh, this really set the stage for the next generation renal denervation uh, devices. The Simplicity Spiral device uh, that really has four electrodes, as I mentioned earlier, arranged in a helical fashion. Uh, this helped access the distal renal arteries and its branches, and also the ultrasound-based therapy uh, system with, uh, with better penetration. This was studied in a spinal hypertension off medication study that really uh, randomized about 80, 80 patients to either renal innovation or uh, control, sham control. And it is to be noted that uh, these patients were not on medications during the study. This was a proof of concept study that um, the inclusion criteria was uh, office blood pressure, systolic blood pressure between 150 and 80, diastolic greater than 90 and ambulatory blood pressure between, systolic blood pressure between 140 to 170. As shown on the right side of the slide, compared to the baseline, there was a significant reduction in the office systolic blood pressure and the ambulatory systolic blood pressure in the renal denervation arm. And when you compare it to the control arm at three months, there was a statistically significant uh, difference in, fa that favored the renal denervation arm. This was followed by, uh, uh, by another study, spinal hypertension on medication study. The, this study randomized about 80 patients to renal denervation or uh, control. Uh, however, this study included patients who were on medications with difficult to control blood pressures. Uh, typically, there were one to three medications um, that were used in, in these patients. The inclusion criteria was very similar to the previous study, and this showed a consistent um, reduction in uh, in office uh, systemic uh, systolic blood pressure and ambulatory systolic blood pressure to the order of about seven millimeters mercury uh, in both. And uh, at the end of six months, the mean difference seemed to favor the renal denervation therapy, and this was statistically significant. Finally, the Radiance Hypertension Solo Study. This used the ultrasound-based uh, uh, system. About 140 patients were randomized um, to either uh, renal denervation or, uh, or, or control. And at two months, um, the ambulatory blood pressure was much lower in the renal denervation arm compared to the sham control arm. And the mean difference was about six millimeters mercury. So another positive study. Now, putting it all together, this slide really summarizes the four major randomized studies, the Simplicity Hypertension 3 study that was a negative study. However, this was followed by the Spinal Hypertension on medication and off medication study. Both were positive that uh, favoring the renal innovation 
therapy. And finally, the Radiance Hypertension, which was the ultrasound-based uh, system that was another positive study favoring renal denervation therapy. And this uh, difference was shown both in the office and the 24-hour ambulatory blood pressure. There are a variety of new devices that are being uh, tested uh, for renal denervation therapy. Uh, there's one, one such device, the, uh, which is an, has an infusion catheter that injects alcohol into the adventitial space that would aid in the uh, ablation of renal nerves. And there are uh, studies that are ongoing that, that is comparing the radio frequency to the ultrasound-based systems, and also studies examining renovation phenomenon after renal denervation therapy. So to conclude, is renal denervation making uh, renal denervation therapy making a comeback? I would say yes, and hopefully I've convinced you all that there is a place for this uh, therapy in select group of patients. It has been shown to be safe and effective, uh, and uh, on an average, about five to seven millimeters uh, difference in the ambulatory blood pressure in the sham controlled uh, studies. It is to be noted that uh, there is a better result when uh, the ablation is performed in the distal renal arteries and the branches. Um, and, and now we have uh, evidence for short-term benefits, but we still need uh, long-term and cardiovascular outcomes data. Thank you for the opportunity, and this is my contact information.